here. Let's start with the SEC on CBS Saturday afternoon. Alabama at Arkansas. Arkansas coming off that loss to AM. They were very sad, driving all the way back from Jerry World to Fayetteville. Look, they think they can win this game. Danny, we had Houston Nutt on earlier today, and he was saying, I think they can win this yeah. game as well. Um, Arkansas, or excuse me, Alabama favored by 16 and a half, though, on the road. Does any one. team going to play a game think they can't win the game? Okay, or, yeah. but you know what I mean? Like, I mean, they really, like, they've lost to Alabama 15 times in a row. That's right. Out of maybe all of those 15 games, this is the most belief their fans have in them to win. Houston Nuts, my guy. Right? That's what I'm saying. Brady but he also, he like, likes Arkansas every week. A little bit, a little bit. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but more importantly, whether they can win the game, who cares? We want to know how they do against the number. Yeah. And I actually like them against the number here. I do. Uh, this is a team that, you know, a uh, botched stretch for the end zone by K.J. Jefferson, if he's able to get that in, it's 21-7, and right. that game could have different ended game. completely different. And had they dominated that game against Texas A&M and come out with a big win, I think this number might be a little bit tighter. So I also look at Alabama, and they haven't exactly been tested. And the one time they were tested against Texas, they barely got by with the win. Texas didn't have their quarterback for the majority of the game, and it wasn't great. For Alabama, So I'm very curious to see. I think Alabama, I think that they're going to win. Like, I'm not calling for the outright upset, but I think Arkansas does make a game of this. The environment's going to be crazy. I do think they have an incredible belief in their team. Oh, what's and, that? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I do think that. <laughs> and Sam Pittman, is, they're buying what he is selling. He, by the way, he's a great quote machine, by the way, and somebody you would love to play for. But I do think they keep this in the numbers. So I'll go ahead and take Arkansas in a lower scoring game. I'll go ahead and take Arkansas. Let's go back to where Alabama struggled earlier on the road this year in Austin versus Texas. What you saw was Bryce Young constantly pestered by that defense for Texas, that front getting pressure on him. Who's the best team getting sacks in the SEC right now, Danny? Ooh, Arkansas. Arkansas. That's right. They lead with 20. And by the way, it's not even Four more. close. Yeah. So we know they're really good at getting pressure on opposing quarterbacks. We know KJ Jefferson doesn't really turn over the football. They're going to eat up clock with that rushing attack, but they can make some big plays in the passing game too. So I'm with you. I think Arkansas is able to keep this thing close at home, playing to that home crowd. Uh, don't get twisted. Alabama wins the game. They've got the best player in the country in Bryce Young at quarterback, okay? But at the end of the day, I think you're going to see Arkansas keep this thing within the number. A little lock unity to begin our yeah. program. I like that there. All right, we have number seven, seven, Kentucky at number 14, Ole Miss here. Kentucky is getting Chris Rodriguez back for this game, leading rush from the SEC a year ago. He was suspended for the beginning of the season. Um, Ole Miss, it opened at four. It is now seven. They're favored by seven. Brady, you think this number looks a little fishy? This number looked really fishy to me. I mean, you've got Kentucky that's a top 10 ranked team right now with the way they play this year. One of the better quarterbacks in college football, uh, and Will Levis. And I, I get they're on the road. They're playing in Oxford, but seven-point underdog here? Some doesn't make sense. And you just talked about Chris Rodriguez, their leading rush for the previous two seasons. He's coming back. And the one element that's been kind of missing from this Kentucky offense has been their rushing attack. I mean, I look at how these two teams match up. I don't get it. I must be missing something here. Maybe I'm the fish right now and I'm on the hook, <laughs> but I'll gladly take those seven points. With UK, that's a better defense than Ole Miss. I think they'll be able to stop that rushing attack for Ole Miss, and they haven't really displayed the ability to throw the football around that well. So I think the way these two teams stack up, I don't think UK is going to need the points. I think they get to another 5-0 and mark, second time under Mark Stoops, and they move forward, still an undefeated team, trying to make maybe a play and be that dark horse in the SEC. So you're going, they win outright. I'm going to say they, they, I'll take the seven points, but I think they win outright. Wow. I'm on the other side of this one all together. I think the game is about athletes, and I think Ole Miss has better athletes on the outside. Now, Mark Stoops would counter with this is a physical game, and we have more physical. They got some athletes too seven. now. They do, but I still think Ole Miss will be able to put up points. Both of these teams kind of are, they both struggled last week. Tulsa put up a lot of points against Ole Miss, and Northern Illinois had you know uh, Kentucky in a really dire situation there late. But ultimately, I do like Ole Miss here to get it done. I liked it a lot more at six and a half when we made these picks seven. I think will be a little bit tougher, but you sound like you're ready to just go. But I like uh, I like the Rebels here playing at home. Number 10, NC State at number 5, Clemson. Uh, Clemson last week barely coming away with that overtime win against Wake Forest. NC State won this game last year, but we are seeing a different Clemson team than we did last season. Uh, Clemson favored by 6.5. Brady, the total here is 42. What's your play? I'm laying the points. Look, Death Valley, tough place to go in to win a football game. That's part of it. I don't know that NC State's really been tested. We saw Clemson a week ago. They were tested, and guess what? DJ Uyunglele puts out his best performance of the season. We know they like to base things off Will Shipley, but it was DJ U who really stepped up, in my opinion. 
you know, we know how stingy both these defenses are. Um, so this is a game that, I mean, look, bottom line, I, I think the number's a little low at 42, so I think it hits the over. But I'm laying the six and a half points. I think Clemson found something. I think DJU found some confidence with how he played in crucial moments versus Wake last week. So I'll lay the six and a half. I think uh, Devin Leary's going to have a tough time versus Clemson defense. I agree with everything you said. I, I, I look at that performance for DJ against Wake Forest, which is a good team. Yeah. In a game where you had to go possession for possession and you had to get touchdowns, you get a two point conversions, like a lot of high pressure situations, or you lose. And he stepped up every single time. I also think the defense, I was that was probably the most surprising thing to me was how Sam Hartman played well against Clemson's defense with that slow riding. But they like it was a scheme that actually worked way better than I thought it would because they did that little ride, that ride, and then at the last second, Sam Hartman would take it out, oh, he'd get wrong. killed, and he'd make a great throw. NC State doesn't run that offense. Well, by the way, a year ago, that didn't work versus Wade. Right, like, right. They weren't effective at all with that slow RPO. Right. It was this, this And they around. worked it. I think Clemson's defense will have their ears pinned back against a more traditional style of system. And I, as concerned as I am about Clemson's secondary, because they were getting torched too, yeah. I still think they'll have a better time shutting down this NC State offense. I'm curious to know from you, because I definitely had a game, specific game, it was against our rival. My first year starting, it was kind of a little bit of a roller coaster, right? Up and down. You know, the crowd was like, is this our guy? You know, I had to fill in for Charlie Ward. And we came back against Florida 31 to 3. And from that moment on, I looked at myself differently. Everyone looked different on me. I was like, this is my team now. I think that was that game for DJ. And that, you know, because when he came in against Notre Dame, I was like, you're the backup. It's pretty, you know, it's not a lot of pressure on you. You can go back to Trevor Lawrence. With all the criticism that he's taken, and the heat and the questioning. I think even in that locker room, there are probably some guys like, I don't know if he's the guy. I think he proved it to everybody, and I think you're going to see a different version of DJ Uyungle from here forward. He's not looking over his shoulder anymore, no. a.k.a. Club Nick. And I think that was a conversation coming into the season, but he proved it. And to me, too, he added about 50 yards on the ground rushing. That was what I wanted to see from him. I mean, he's a big athletic guy, and for whatever reason, either he was just trying to you know, keep his eyes downfield and play within the system and didn't want to take off and utilize that athleticism, but he showcased that. And with Will Shipley able to run like that and DJU on top of what they can do in the perimeter throwing the football, it's a dangerous combination. So I know Will Brinson's going to be really upset with this pick. Yeah. He's, he's a big <laughs> NC State alum. He'll let us hear about it if we're not right. He will. He'll be the first person to text us and let us know. I don't think we're getting that text this weekend. And Wake Forest, um, Danny Cannell. Yeah. Taking on your Florida State Seminoles. we got the logo there behind you. I know. Um, I think as of this moment, they have not moved the game. Not yet. Yet? Nope. Yet, you were favored at home by six and a half if this yep. hurricane moves on through. Snatch it now before okay. it continues to move up to a touchdown because I do like Florida State here. This game makes me nervous. I don't love all the money that's come in because it opened at three and a half and all this money comes rushing on the Seminoles. But the reason I like them is I do think this is a different team than we've seen over the last five years at Florida State. Incredibly up and down. You can't really trust them. Jordan Travis is playing as good as anybody that's out there. He comes back off, you know, sooner than we thought off the injury. He looked spectacular last week. All of a sudden, his receiving core, not just one guy. Johnny Wilson's been getting a lot of attention for the performances he's had. But they've had several guys rolling four deep that have stepped up big for the Seminoles. I think this one could be a little bit of a higher scoring affair because Wake's offense, as we saw against, uh, uh, against Clemson, is able to put up points against anybody. But I, I just trust this Florida State team more than I have in years past. So I'm going to go. If it's crazy. If you would ask me before the season, I'm like, oh, it's probably a loss. And now yeah. they are is almost a touchdown favorite. But I do think they're getting healthier, and I think they're playing with a ton of confidence. First time we started 4 0 since, what, 2015? Yeah. Or yeah. First time they've been ranked in five years. It's, it's been a while. You got to feel good about yourself. I feel like you're cautiously optimistic. Don't look at that. I am very, you're very cautious. cautious. Like, you're not very. smiling during no. any of this. Because I can't stand when programs <laughs> are you back or not. I don't want to, I don't even want to, like, go there at all. You got to prove your back first. Okay. My, my favorite bet, to your point in talking about this line, is the over. I think there'll be a lot of scoring in this game. Uh, we need to give Jordan Travis a lot of credit. He's improved big time. When you look at his numbers, uh, both just completion percentage. Yards per game, I mean, I think they're averaging almost 80 yards more than they were previously as far as passing yards per game. It's a credit to him. It's a credit to Johnny Wilson, him coming in and really having the impact that he's had, especially in the red zone. It's that big target that's reliable with a huge catch radius. Uh, to me, though, Sam Hartman is the one that's going to steal the show here. You couldn't have asked for much more from him last week. He was phenomenal, and they still didn't come away with the win. Uh, I think he's going to play well enough to keep this thing close and within the numbers, so I'm taking the six and a half points 
uh, and Wake Forest here. And like I said, I do like the over. I think it's going to be a high scoring affair. Both these defenses just you know trying to keep up with what's going to be attractive. Danny, if this moves somewhere else, does that change your mind a lot? I won't love it. And I'm actually, I, I was bummed because the students were sent home Tuesday to Friday. Like classes yeah. were canceled. So I'm a little, I, I wanted to see a loud atmosphere. Like there's a lot of excitement around the program. I'm curious to see what type of crowd you do get. Hopefully things blow through and everybody's okay. <laughs> Everybody comes back like rested. and Ready, ready to go, go ready louder. to go. But we'll see how that goes. All right, ranked versus ranked team. We get number nine, uh, Oklahoma State at number 16, Baylor. This is a rematch of the Big 12 championship we saw last year. Uh, right now, Big 12 wide open. Baylor favored at home by two and a half to total 54 and a hook, Brady. I'm on the, uh, the side of Oklahoma State here. I just think they're the better football team because, uh, because of how Spencer Sanders has been playing at quarterback. Uh, he's really taken – leaps and strides from where he was a year ago where I feel like they relied more on their defense that was the top in the Big 12 they relied more on the rushing attack now I feel like he's taking over games and so he's gotten to a different dimension for me you know they're coming off the bye I think that's going to play uh, a little bit of a role here too but as I kind of look through like this is really one of their first road tests to date their defense isn't what it used to be because Jim Knowles is now at Ohio State not in Stillwater I'm a little bit concerned about this one because I do think Baylor's found their identity after that loss to BYU a couple weeks ago, running the football. Blake Shapin's playing much better. I'll take the two and a half points. I mean, this is one of those that I think it's going to come down to probably that final drive, and whoever has the football is going to win. But I'll take the two and a half here in Oklahoma State. Baylor had a really nice win last week against Iowa State. I, st I like Oklahoma State to win this game outright. Um, Spencer Sanders, to me, is kind of, we're talking about quarterback figuring it out. I, I'm a little bit worried because he's been a roller coaster ride. I mean, even going back to the last two games last year, Big 12 championship, he was awful. Bowl game, he was great. But he's been playing great this season, and I'm counting on him to put those, you know, rocky performances behind him with all the turnovers because I'm with you. I think they're the better team, yeah. and I think he has the edge at quarterback, and he's been playing. I mean, it's been like we haven't seen him that much because only three games and they had the bye week. But I think from what I've seen, I love what I'm getting. Two things. Last year he started off the season, got a little banged up, and yeah. I don't know how healthy he was. And then we saw him this season, the way he started off. I mean, he's been was, has been tearing it up. Maturity too. I, I think with maturity comes more consistency with how you prepare, how you play. And we're seeing a more mature Spencer Sanders right now at the quarterback spot. Last week you guys um, had six lock unity picks. We begin with three right off the top here. Uh, but quite a few ranked versus ranked teams as we recap what we've seen so far between Brady and Danny and their picks thus far. They both like Arkansas and the under. They both say take Clemson and the over and Oklahoma State and the under as well. Getting ready for week five in college football, taking a look at ranked SEC and ACC games. We've got Texas A&M um, going up against Mississippi State. Mississippi State favored at home. Texas A&M coming off their win against Arkansas. Georgia coming off its closest game of the season so far, traveling to Mizzou. Let's welcome back Brady Quinn and Danny Cannell here getting their picks for week five in college football. We're going through all of the ranked games. So let's start with Georgia at Missouri. Georgia coming off its closest game of the season so far against Kent State. They were favored by 44 in that one. They won 39-22. They're favored by 27 and a half. Danny on the road. They were on the ropes. Kent State and the Golden Barely. Flashes. Oh, he's, he's happy. That was a big he, win for me. He picked Kent State and I picked Georgia. <laughs> right. so, yeah. That was That's their a big number. It was a big number. It was number. huge. And that was their kind of lay an egg, you know, show up, walk through it. Tell you what, Brock Bowers is maybe the play, best player awesome. in the country when you talk about just offensive players. All right, so here's the assumption I'm making because I'm going to take Mizzou and the points. I'm assuming they like their coach and they want him around because I think Eli Drinkwitz needs – he needs to play this game close. I don't think he has to win, clearly. And he almost had the win against Auburn. It's a program that I don't think likes their coach, and they're going to have a new one here sooner rather than later. But I think he'll get Missouri's best effort on the defensive side of the ball. I think they'll at least slow Georgia down somewhat. It's my probably least favorite pick of the week, but I think it's a lot of points. I'm going to go ahead and take Missouri, get one of those first half, like, best efforts. Georgia pulls away late for 27 and a half. I'd love it if it was 28 and a half. Of course, get that four touchdown magic number. But I'll go ahead and take Eli Drinkwitz here in Missouri. I feel like Georgia in this case, based on how they looked last week versus Kent State. Get right. Yeah, Kirby Smart's going to say, well, we're going to go in there as the Grim Reaper for Eli Drinkwitz. Um, and by the way, luck's not on their side. You can't watch how Missouri lost last week and not think that they have any luck moving forward. I mean, a chip shot field goal, wide right. Yep. You can't believe that. Nathaniel Pete to the end zone, he fumbles oh. as he's going. I mean, it, you can't make this stuff up. Like, this is college football at its best. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and lay the 27 and a half points. Now, 
This has been my Achilles heel this entire season. Yeah. Are these I mean, we're doing spreads. the exact same thing that we've I just, done I, I every single I week. I go back and forth. I go back and forth. I can never get it right this year. I probably never will get it right. I think Georgia steps up, though. I think they understand, too, considering that Alabama's the other team in the SEC and that other team that you're probably battling for number one, you got to be careful about how you look along the course of the way because eventually they're going to meet in the SEC championship game. And whoever loses that, you might want to have a little cushion like we've seen in the past so you still make it in as one of the top four teams like we saw last year. And, and so, I, I'm, again, I'm not saying Georgia's not going to be there when it's all said and done, but you got to see something more from Stetson Bennett. you got to see something more from that defense that kind of took, I would say, a half of football off last week. So. They need, like, they, their resume isn't going to be great. It's not oh. their fault because, you know, Florida all of a sudden isn't looking very good. Missouri's not very good. Kentucky's, Auburn's not very depending good. Depending on what happens Yeah, this Kentucky week. might be their best win, yeah. So we have Texas A&M yeah. traveling to Mississippi State. Uh, Texas A&M beating Arkansas, which is great for them, but it wasn't one of those wins like, oh, we, we look awesome here. Mississippi State favored at home in this one by, what is it, three and a half there. They had Will Rogers toss six touchdown passes last weekend. Brady, what do you think about this game? Well, first off, Will Rogers has been fantastic. I don't know that we talk about enough guys who are kind of setting the stage for themselves to play at the next level, but you talked about his game last week versus Bowling Green State. I mean, this entire year he's been one of those guys you look at and you say, He's got the capability to play at the next level. He's, he's proving that and showing that. This number looked funny to me. I mean, Texas a and coming off a win that you're thinking to yourselves, all right, this should be a, a pick em maybe at, at worst for Texas a if they're not favored. I know they lose Anaya Smith for the rest of the season, but you've got this guy, Devon A-Chain, and he's a difference maker. And you've got a Texas a defense that I think can shut down the passing attack of Mike Leach and this Mississippi State pass-happy attack and Will Rogers. So I'll take the three and a half points, but call me a fish again. Maybe I'm on the hook here, Danny. I, something looks off. I'm on the same side as you as well. I and I, you never want to lose a player. And I, Smith and A-Chain, we talked about this last week. They've been their offense. Those two guys have really stood out. Maybe, maybe they actually get away from an I, Smith and it's a good thing, like that they have to spread the ball out, that other guys do have to step up. Because I do think as a quarterback or even as a play caller, for whatever reason, they have really force-fed the ball to those two players. Now maybe you have to go to other players. And they have some young, talented players on that team that could step up. But I do think this is more about the defense, being able to stymie Will Rogers and that air raid system. Because the best way to stop it is get pressure on them. And I think they'll have some success getting home in this one. So I like the Aggies as well. We have Georgia Tech at hit uh, first game for Georgia Tech since firing their head coach, Jeff Collins. Uh, Danny, we've talked about it sometimes. We see teams really rally after firing your head coach. I'm not sure if that's going to be the case here. I think Pitt is also favored by 24 in this one, the total 50 and a hook. I think I took that philosophy one time this year, and it was after Nebraska fired Scott Frost, but then after Arizona State fired How'd that work? By the yeah. way, that one was awful. They, yeah, they, they, they threw in the towel. Yeah, yeah. They got, yeah, they got, they got then with Arizona State, I took the opposite side, <laughs> and it worked because Utah actually covered. So in this one, I'm sticking with a philosophy because I do think when you fire your coach, I think it sends a message that you've thrown in the towel in the season. And when players hear that message, I think they tend to throw in the towel too. It is going to be a really hard job to, uh, to feel like this team is motivated. I still think Pitt is a really good football team. It's a big number. It's in Pittsburgh. I'll go ahead and take the Pitt Panthers to cover this one. I'm with you. Big number. I'm laying the points. Um, I feel good about this one, though, for a few reasons. I mean, for starters, Jeff Collins had an uphill battle to begin with. His roster got gutted by the transfer portal before the season even began. So you knew that was a potential issue of just lack of talent. Then you, you know, don't get off to a great start. It's a tough situation to be in. I feel mostly for Jeff Sims, who actually played one of his better games last week of the season so far. They just don't have much help. Offensively, they have a really hard time scoring. And so, you know, Pitch, it who's it was found their, their identity, which is going to be in the rushing attack. I mean, Israel uh, Abana Kanda, I mean, he, he's been phenomenal this year so far for Pitt. So I, I think this is one you don't worry about. This is almost one of my best bets. It's not, but I think Pitt's going to put up a pretty big number here. Almost. 24th ranked pit, favored by 24 in this one. Let's recap their picks. Four ranked games in the SEC and ACC here. One lock unity we have in this. Both of you like Texas A&M to cover the three and a half on the road. Um, and the under against Mississippi State there. They both also say lay the points with Pitt at home against Georgia Tech. 
College football picks with Brady Quinn and Danny Cannell here getting you ready for week five, taking a look at Big Ten ranked games we got coming up this week. Uh, Ohio State going up against Rutgers there every time. Danny, you and I like these stats. Uh, these two teams have played before. Ohio State has won by 22 points or more. They're favored by 41 here. Michigan hitting the road to take on Iowa. Brady Quinn will be at that game. And Penn State favored by 25 and a half at home against Northwestern. So let's jump into the Big Ten. Let's start with Rutgers at number three, Ohio State here. Buckeyes favored by 41, the total 59 and a hook. Brady, you've liked some of the big numbers yeah. so far this season. What do you think about the 41? Not this one. And in part two, I think Ohio State played a pretty big game this past week versus Wisconsin. Now, they blew them out of the water. Um, they, I thought that game would be a closer game than what it was. Ohio State really stepped up, stepped up and showed the fact that, look, they've improved the rush defense. No one's going to question that. Marvin Harrison – even when Jackson Smith and Jigba comes back for this game, will probably demonstrate the fact that he is the best wide receiver at Ohio State. At least he looks to be the best NFL prospect. Uh, and C.J. Strouds, again, continue to put together a big season. But don't forget, head coach Greg Schiano, he was at Ohio State. He knows a lot of what's going on there offensively. I think they'll have a good enough game plan to slow down Ohio State in this one. Even if Jackson Smith and Jigba comes back, I think they can stay within that number of 41 points and make this competitive <laughs> enough and by the way you don't get on Ohio State enough for their scheduling you know they played Notre Dame the beginning of the year it looked like it wasn't that great of a game now it looks like all right maybe Notre Dame's not going to be all right this year but this is their fifth straight home game their yeah. fifth straight home game how many other teams get to play five straight home games and not have to travel this early in the season I think Michigan yeah, <laughs> Aren't they? Michigan. Like, Michigan has eight and I think Ohio State like has eight Washington is the other all. one where they have played all home games up until this week, which we'll talk about here a little bit. Yeah, and it's, you know, those teams are doing really well because they're playing in their backyard. Um, to me, this game, about, you know, saying about Chiano knowing the system, this game, it's not about the X's and O's, it's about the Larry's and the Joe's. I think Ohio State <laughs> has way more Larry's and Joe's than Rutgers does. So I'm going to go ahead and lay the points here. Again, I don't love these, these high point spread games either. But, I mean, Rutgers' offense, I think they're pretty anemic as it is. I think Ohio State's defense, we're seeing the improvements there. And good luck trying to stop the offense. And that's the way I look at it. I think they're going to put up a big number. It'll probably be close. It might be one you're sweating out late. That's why I don't like it from, like, a sheer, like, what games of these would you put money on? I probably wouldn't touch this one. I think Ohio State will cover that big number. But I just don't love it. Like, it seems like a backdoor. Some, something funny is going to happen in this game. That's why I'm going with Rutgers. I, by the way, I also like the over, given the fact that I think Ohio State would like to put up some pretty big numbers yeah, here. Yeah. I think they'd like They might to cover the number by themselves. If it's 59 and a half, they might put up 60. Yeah, and I think they'd like to put up enough numbers where C.J. Stroud's starting to, to really make a case for himself, at least statistically speaking, why he should win the Heisman. So let's talk about Michigan finally hitting the road, uh, taking on Iowa there. So we looked at that game against Maryland to really sort of judge what we're going to see from this Michigan team. Uh, I will note, this is the Chris Hassel stat here, Iowa has won five of its last six home games against top five opponents there. Brady, you're going to be at this game. Wolverines favored by 10 and a half on the road. Yeah, now I don't know that Penn State was top five last year when they went to Iowa City, but I was there for that. Iowa did upset them. Now, it helps when Sean Clifford gets knocked out of the game. This is going to be a little different challenge, I think, for Iowa. Now, again, their defense is, is one of the best in the country. We've always known that. And they play a similar style in the sense of a more bend but don't break. They don't give up big plays. They make you work the ball methodically down the field. And guess what? Michigan struggled last week offensively, in particular in the passing game. Why? Because Mike Loxley and his staff, he made JJ, they made JJ McCarthy have to work methodically down the field. There was a lot of drop eight coverage, a lot of soft zone coverage. They were inviting them to run the football, which Maryland did successfully. I was going to do something of the same. So this number originally, when I was looking at it, I was like, ah, Michigan's got the better Larrys and Joes, like you just said a second ago. And I think they'll have better speed. They'll be able to make enough plays in the end. I think this one's going to be tight. I think there's, there's one or two games a year. We see it every time, Danny, where Brian Ferentz, and then they pull out this great offensive game plan, and it silences all the critics of, of the, how bad this offense is for Iowa. I worry that that might be this game for the Hawkeyes. But I'm taking the 10 and a half points. I do think Michigan still wins this game. I, yeah. 17 10 maybe you know that'll get under <laughs> and it'll get the cover for you if because i'm on the same side as you blake quorum i think you're going to see him try to run again he went off for 243 yards but this is a different defense that he'll be going against yep. i do think i will have more success shutting down michigan's run which puts more pressure on jj mccarthy who for all the hoopla around him and i like him at quarterback for michigan i think it was the good decision to make to try to see if you get more upside he's still very young 
hasn't been tested on the road as the starter. Cade McNamara is still hurt. He's not available, so there's no security blanket that, ah, we're not struggling. That's a different sort of pressure that's on him, and I think you could see them sputter a little bit offensively. Not really worried about Iowa putting up a bunch of points. I think this will just be a low-scoring affair, and Iowa gets the cover. I, I do think what could break the game open, and one of the skill sets that we didn't see from J.J. McCarthy last week versus Maryland is his ability to run. Yeah. It was almost like he was reluctant to take off and run, pick up what he could, and they've got plenty of backups. I mean, two weeks ago, Michigan played eight quarterbacks in the game, and Alan Bowman's there. He's experienced. They've got some other talented guys they've recruited. Um, but that's the one element that I think he brings that's really different from Cade McNamara, even when McNamara is back and healthy, that separates what this offense can potentially be for Michigan. We have Northwestern visiting at number 11 now, Penn State. I talked to Dennis Dodd earlier this week. He said Penn State is biggest riser in his power rankings. He thinks that Sean Clifford's being overlooked here. Penn State favored by 25 and a half at home. But both of you taking Northwestern to cover. Why? Because that's what they do. They play close games. They're a tough physical team. And this is one of those games that it, it's a Big Ten matchup. It's one with, you know, Pat Fitzgerald is going to get his team up for it. That's just the culture of what they have there. But they're not going to win. <laughs> I mean, they're going to lose by three touchdowns probably. But they'll stay within the number. I mean, look, after the week zero win versus Nebraska, they've been one in one score games the entire time, losing to some really bad opponents. But they've been in those games. They're all right, always right there. So uh, this is one where Penn State just leans on Nick Singleton and Katron Allen, their freshman running backs, who are phenomenal. Eventually, one of those guys will be, break a big run. Uh, and, and Sean Clifford will make his place too in the passing game. But I'm going to go ahead and take the 25 and a half points here, but don't get it twisted. Penn State wins this game. Yeah, Penn State's going to win. Uh, this is where Pat Fitzgerald thrives, I think, in this spot where no one's giving you a chance. You know, and I've gone against him a lot of times like this. Everybody's telling Penn State, you know, Dennis Dodd's out there talking about him, like you were mentioning, man. That's a death uh, sentence, by the way. <laughs> right, when when Dodd's on the bandwagon, you got The Godfather coming in. Yeah. No, but everyone's telling you how great you are. The win against Auburn, which they got so much credit for. How good of a win was that when you see Auburn, you know, almost getting beat by Mizzou, probably making a switch at coach. And it was a good win. Don't get me wrong. Like, it was an impressive win. I don't know if they're good enough to trust them to go out there and dominate a Northwestern team, which you will get their best effort. Like, this will be a well-game-planned defense for Penn State's offense. I think they'll slow them down some. I think they'll stay within the number. Penn State will win, but Northwestern will cover. All right, agreement there. Purdue at Minnesota. Minnesota before this week was unranked. They are now 4-0 heading into this one at 21 in the top 25. They're the favorite by 10 and a half at home. The total 53 and a hook, Danny. So we were talking about Penn State. Everybody's telling them how good they are. Minnesota's so great, too. Purdue is a really battle-tested team that could easily – see their record completely shifted if they get a stop. Deshaun Clifford had that great drive in week one. Uh, Syracuse, who's a good football team, they hit a last-second touchdown against them. I think this is a really tough matchup for Minnesota, and I think Purdue will find a way to put up some points against them uh, offensively and slow down somewhat that rushing attack of Minnesota. I think that's way too big of a number here. Even though it's at Minnesota, I like Purdue here on the road. With well, the first point. off, yeah, l let me just say this. It is impressive what Minnesota has been able to sure. do this year. I mean, they Tanner have, Morgan is back. <laughs> Tanner Morgan is back. Yeah. And it's in part because they have Kirk Sharaka, their offensive coordinator, back. So you're seeing the Tanner Morgan we saw back when he was with Sharaka, and that's part of it. Uh, Joe Rossi, their defensive coordinator, has been phenomenal. I mean, they have the biggest yardage differential of anyone in college football. And I know they've played an easier schedule. It hasn't been that big of a cakewalk for Minnesota. It's, it's pretty impressive to see how good they are defensively, but also what they're doing offensively now with Sharaka back. I look at this game and I just think, you know, everyone's tried to stop Charlie Jones, the transfer from Iowa at Purdue. He's leading the Big Ten in every receiving category. They can't stop this kid. They can't. And this is the number one pass defense in the Big Ten in Minnesota. I think they're going to struggle to find a way of not allowing Purdue to get their points, have their plays, it's a Jeff Brom coach team. You're going to see a flea flicker at some point. It's just it's what he does. He has a trick play. He's got a flea flicker. I think this stays within the number. I'm with you. I, I think Purdue is able to keep this one close. Uh, I do think there'll be a fair amount of scoring, though, uh, from both sides of it. Even as good as Minnesota has been defensively, I think this one hits the over. Recapping Brady and Danny's picks for the Big Ten here, heading into week five. A lot more agreement with you guys this week. We have two more lock unity picks here. Both of you like Iowa and the under. Hawkeyes hosting Michigan. They also say Purdue and the over on the road against Minnesota. Let's head to the Pac-12, shall we? Getting you ready for week five, taking a look at games we've got coming up in the Pac-12 there. Uh, USC now ranked sixth. They just keep winning, Danny.
started off as 14. They're now up to six. Oregon hosting Stanford, favored by 16 and a half at home. Bo Nix putting up career high numbers so far, and it's time there with the Ducks. Let's start with Arizona State at number six, USC. That is the highest USC has now been ranked since 2016, 2017, I should say. Uh, they're favored by 26. I don't know who to start with here, so. Danny, why don't you go ahead? Sure, I'll go. Fighting Pete Frisco's coming so to town. So I have faded USC a lot this season. This time, I am not. I'm going to go ahead and lay the points with the Trojans. And I think it's a perfect opportunity, too, after their offense kind of sputters a little bit uh, in Corvallis. I think this is a get-right game for them. And I cannot trust a program which feels very toxic right now. You know, the reports coming out that, you know, coaches were, uh, you know, giving other teams information and trying to get Herm Edwards fired. I don't trust Emory Jones at quarterback. I think this is a program in complete disarray. I think USC playing back at home gets right, and I think they cover easily. I think they know they need to get right, and they need to put up a big number here. So not only do I like the fact that I'm laying the 26 points here with the Trojans, I'll also take the over. I think they're going to put up a big number on a team that, as you said, is in disarray. It's a bad matchup, too. Look, Emory Jones has never really developed at the quarterback spot like we thought he would. He threw a couple picks last week versus Utah. USC has been very optimistic on defense. Uh, but if you go back and look at Caleb Williams, look, it was a, a hard-fought, tough win in Corvallis. Talk to Matt and Reggie. They, they act like that place is Fort Knox, hard to get in, hard to get out. <laughs> that, that being the case, there is something to be said for this. If you go back and look at the stats last year of Caleb Williams, after his first three starts, he looked phenomenal. People were talking about him being a potential Heisman candidate. That doesn't even include what he did versus Texas when he came in in relief of Spencer Rattler. Then what happened the last four starts? Sputtered. Dropping completion percentage, started throwing more interceptions, didn't look quite the same. We got through three starts this year. Then we get to the fourth. Doesn't look quite the same versus Oregon State in Corvallis. I just wonder if there's starting to be a book maybe on Caleb Williams, some of his weaknesses that teams are starting to hone in on. Now, I don't think it's going to come into play in this game, but I think it's something to keep an eye on as they move forward through the season. You do play better teams like a Utah. They're going to have to get through at some point. If you see him struggle a bit, is he one of those guys that can't adapt or can Lincoln Riley not adapt the way he needs to with Caleb Williams to get USC to be a team that can go to the top? He did drop slightly in the Heisman odds. It now goes CJ Stroud, Bryce Young, and then Caleb Williams. So they flipped there. All right, uh, funky things could happen in Corvallis. We saw Oregon State keep pace, as you guys said. With USC, they are now hitting the road to take on number 12, Utah there. Utes favored by 10 and a half at home, the total 56 and a hook. Uh, good test for them at home. It's a great test for them, and I think they pass it with flying colors. I like Utah here to lay the points as well. Oregon State's a good football team. I think that was a really tough loss for them. Curious to see how they bounce back. Quarterback struggle in that game pretty bad. And I think Cam Rising has really flourished. Tavion Thomas, the weapons that they have there at Utah. You go back and look at the Florida game. That was a game everybody wanted to write off Utah and say, oh, they have no chance to make the playoff. If they do, I think this is the type of game they need to come out and put a statement game together and say, yeah, we're, we're, we're still very much a player here. They also could have beaten Florida in Gainesville, which I still think is a good loss for them resume-wise. But I think ultimately they get it done here playing at home at Rice Eccles. Great home field advantage. I like them. I like them big. I'm with you. Uh, I think they cover this number two. Tough place to go play. Playing at altitude, too. We, we sometimes fail to realize that. For all the reasons you said, I'm right there with you. I do think this needs to be a statement game for Utah. And I do I kind of wonder about Oregon State. If they can get back up against another tough opponent two weeks in a row now, but this time, this time going on the road. Now, Brant Keithy, the top tight end for Utah, is out for the rest of the season. That's a tough loss for them. They do have Kincaid, he's the other tight end, one of the favorite targets too, and then Devon Vele, he's going to have to pick it up a wide receiver, at least in the passing game for Cam Rising. That being said, this Utah team, I think, needs to make a statement and get all those people who saw that week one loss versus Florida that now is looking worse and worse as the weeks ensue, yeah. that they're continuing to make statements out there, putting up some big numbers. We have Stanford visiting number 13, Oregon. Oregon had to put up 29 in the fourth quarter to go ahead and beat Washington State this past weekend. They're averaging their last 10 games 51.7 points per game. Bo Nix uh, looking good with the Ducks there so far, so they're favored by 16 and a half here. The total 62 and a hook, Brady. What a comeback for Oregon. I mean, what, 29 points, whatever it was in the fourth quarter. Um, I know the defense was, was part of that too, but for Bo Nix, that was his best performance as an Oregon Duck. I think it was huge for them. Uh, look, Stanford's a program that I don't want to say they're in disarray, but they just lost one of their best players, EJ Smith, now running out at running back for the rest of the season. There's no reason for me to think that they'll be overly competitive in this game. And it's also back-to-back -back weeks on the road for Stanford, which is always tough. So I'm laying the 16 and a half points here. I think it stays under that number of 62 and a half. I want to do something we haven't done before on this show. Okay. I want to ask our commissioner, our producer, oh, no. can I switch my pick? 
because I was looking at this one, and you, you gave me the news about EJ Smith. But then I, I, was I did tell you before more the show. about it. I was like, you know what? I've taken Stanford as a dog a lot this year, and it's burned me almost every time. You had Stanford time. in the under. This is what I have written yes, down. So we're yes. what are we switching to? I want to take Oregon, lay the points. Bo Nix all of a sudden playing with a ton of confidence, had that pick six. But other than that, he was close to flawless. Where is he good? He's good at home, and he's good against lesser competition. And I think he's kind of found something. I think he's starting to get a little bit more of his moxie back. So give me the ducks. I want to switch it up if our producer will let us. Uh, it's I not him. That. It's whether or not your competition <laughs> oh, wants to. Oh, my God. Right. Wait, I will, I will allow, allow it. it. I will Jack, allow Commissioner it. Jack, what I, I, do we I, say I here? gave him the okay before okay. the show started. We will allow it. He All said right, you perfect. can And do he switched it. out of the graphic. That's there you go. They're job. very fast. They're very fast. Somebody called upstairs. All right, so we have Lock Unity in that one. Let's go to number 15, Washington at UCLA. Look, we haven't talked about UCLA a whole lot. They're 4-0 headed into this game. Um, I will say they're slashing ticket prices by more than half to try to be People get into just this give game. Them away. Yeah. Just, just I, in the maybe crowd in the Rose Bowl. Washington favored by three and a half in this one, the total 64 and a hook, Brady. It might surprise you, but I'm on the other side of this one. You know, you talked about UCLA being undefeated. I think people looked at that South Alabama game and they're going, how good really is UCLA? You can make the same, you ask the same question about Washington. That win versus Michigan State that looks so good doesn't look very good right now after watching them get stomped out by Minnesota last week. And this is the first test for Washington going on the road. I don't know (laughs) how much of a test it's going to be, but they're not playing in Seattle is more of the point. Uh, Look, I can't wait to watch this game because Michael Penix has been phenomenal this year. Someone passing offense in the Pac-12. I think a lot of people just assumed it was USC. It's not. Kalen DeBoer and Penix, that combination has been phenomenal. But Dorian thompson Robinson's have himself a bit of a year too. And this is one of the best defenses in the Pac-12 in UCLA. So I'll take the three and a half points. You know, Chip Kelly's always got something up his sleeve. I think this will be a lower scoring game, too, with the way this UCLA defense has been playing, maybe shutting down that Washington passing attack game. On the uh, Cover 3 podcast, we always talk about Chip Kelly doesn't care about non-conference games. kind of goes through the motion. But once you get in conference, he knows he wants to try to win that Pac-12 championship. He dials it up. I like UCLA here as the home dog, a very live dog, too. I wouldn't like mind if you took him to win the game outright. Washington tested on the road. Here's the thing I want to see from UCLA. Just give me 40,000 fans. Is that too much to ask? I mean, they've had like. I think they were estimating like. I was going to say, I think 10 is too much to ask. Ten, Come on, 10,000 yeah. actual 25 fans. opponent. That's embarrassing. Then I'm going with Troy Aikman and saying this is ridiculous. I mean, they're trying to call out their fans. I get it's beautiful out in L.A., but come on. You guys got to support your program. That's yeah. ridiculous. By more than 60%, I think season ticket holders are getting off for this week. So go ahead. Head to the game. Invite Please. your friends. Fill it up. Make it a good crowd there. Okay, so let's recap your picks. Let's see if we've been able to change it here. Because, uh, Danny, I think we now have three Lock Unity picks there. Yep. There you go. Going with the Ducks. That's what you needed to change, right? Yeah. We're, Congratulations. All, we're on fire You're now. good. You're good. We're rolling. Better win. <laughs> All right. Coming up, the Sooners try to respond after falling to Kansas State, but more purple in their sights as they head south to take on TCU. We'll go to the Big 12 next. Things were interesting last week in the Big 12. We'll just say that. So we had Oklahoma lose to Kansas State. Texas Tech beat Texas. Oklahoma is going to play TCU. I don't know if they just don't like the color purple. Then we have the big winners, Texas Tech and Kansas State facing off and Utah State visiting BYU, who will be in the Big 12 next season. So let's just dive in and get picks. What? What is Brady? What are you doing? I'm taking TCU because they wear purple. How did that? I'm telling you, like, I so, so, like we just you try to find the pattern. I think it's like I just don't know why. I have no solution to Kansas State. Yeah. Sometimes. That's maybe that's you know, their Achilles I don't heel. Know. I think that's all it is. I think it's their Achilles heel. That's you Oklahoma's look for these things the as last, a fan. Three of the last four years. I mean, yeah. I, I really do feel like Oklahoma fans have to be saying, "What does Manhattan, Kansas? What does Kansas State have over us right now?" I don't now? know. I don't know. So they're gonna go down to Fort Worth, Texas, or yeah. take on TCU. OU's favored by six and a half. Um, yeah, I just don't like this look, color uh, scheme. Is just not working here, well what behind me right now. I don't like it. TCU is coming off their bye. They're going to be rested, well prepared for this game. But I think that also works to Oklahoma, who knows now like they can't afford to drop another game the rest of the way if they want a shot at winning the Big 12. And so they've still got Texas ahead of them. They've still got Oklahoma State. They've still got Baylor. Well, hell, they've got Kansas. Kansas is undefeated right now. That's not a pushover anymore. They should be in the top 25. They're not, but that's Well, fine. that's another conversation yeah. for another day. The reality is this. This is a must win. This is a put it all on the line. And they're doing it against a TCU team that I don't think they can replicate what Kansas State is able to do against Oklahoma's defense. 
They don't have Adrian Martinez. They have Max Duggan. He's not as good of a runner as Adrian Martinez is. Now, he's very capable as a passer, and he can go throw for throw. But I think Oklahoma comes back, they get back on track here, and they cover with a strong win on the road in Fort Worth. Damn. I'm going the other way. I think Sonny Dykes a really good offensive mind. I'm very curious to see how – I totally agree with they need it. First time we've seen the, in the Brent Venables era this team face adversity where everyone is. Maybe there are some critics even there in Norman. You know, you start hearing the home crowd whisper. Now they got to take it on the road and play a team that's playing with a tremendous amount of confidence. And Sonny Dykes said he's never been proud of a player, Max Dugan, for the way he stepped up in this role. I think the Big 12, there's more parity in that conference maybe than in any other, too. Like right from now. the top five, that is wide six open. Teams. I did say that. I did and say I that earlier. Be, I think this could be one of your more kind of back and forth type games that come down to a field goal. So I'll take the home dog. I hope Oklahoma wins for your sake. Thank you, Tony. Just, uh, I appreciate just for my mental, like, like my so mental so health. I mean, yeah. you sounded so sad coming into this segment. I was really yeah. sad coming into this segment. Uh, let's to go to Texas Tech beating Texas. Kansas State, of course, beating Oklahoma there. Um, look, Adrian Martinez did incredible. K-State favored by 7.5 at this one, the total 57 and hook, Brady. This is my toughest one to pick. Yeah. I hate the, the hook here and it being 7.5 for Kansas State. I mean, both teams are, in your words, Coming off a hangover, yep. right? You get Texas Tech with a big win over Texas. Kansas Who is State, the bigger big hangover? Who is yeah. the bigger hangover? Who would you say? This is your Tough verbiage. Judge. I would say Red Texas Raiders, Tech. Right? Texas yeah. Tech. yeah. yeah. Jer- Joey McGuire. They yep. literally and yep. figuratively. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Manhattan, Kansas, tough place to go play. I, I, just, th- I just think I'm, I'm, I'm buying more into what Chris Kleiman and his staff has been able to produce right now and what a- where Adrian Martinez is in this offense. I think it's a, it's a better suited system for him. Uh, and so I'll lay the seven and a half points. I don't feel good about it. I think the one thing I feel good about is the over. If I was picking anything in this game, it'd be the over, but I'll lay the seven and a half points. I'm the same with you on the over. It, it kind of going back to my philosophy of the last game we talked about, Oklahoma TCU. I think there's parity. I think this game will play out probably similarly to the Texas, Texas Tech game where it's kind of back and forth, a little bit wacky, comes back to the final possession. And if it's over a touchdown, I'll go ahead and take the dog. So I'll go ahead and take the Red Raiders here and the seven and a half points. But I don't, I'm with you. I don't love this game. Because you could see it being like a 21-point blowout, too, if, if one team is feeling hungover and isn't ready for this one. But I think both, they're both playing with a lot of confidence, a lot of momentum coming into this one. One more game in this group. Let's look at Utah State at number 19, BYU. BYU gets one more home game, Brady. We're heading to Vegas to take on your Fighting Irish. They're BYU favored by 24. What? You're so excited about that. I'm very excited. Look, I support Danny's team. I support your team. <laughs> I support my team. I love all y'all. Um, what was I saying? BYU 24, total 61 and a half, Danny. Um, oh. oh. <laughs> that, well, just I was going to let him in. go ahead and take it because this is one of my contrarian plays where it doesn't make a lot of sense and it looks too easy and it's never you that easy. You did start 10-0. I, exactly, but then I fell apart. Well, Utah uh, State's been awful. Lately. They have been horrific, I, but I do think in a game in-state rival, we were asking before, right. I don't know what they call this game. I think we'll get their best effort. Yeah, a lot of guys right. coming back what who we haven't it? played maybe a little bit out of sync, out of shape. You buying that? No, <laughs> no. This sounds like an awful argument. Gunnar <laughs> Romney is going to be coming back at wide receiver. Chase yep. Roberts will be back for this game. Jaron Hall's been phenomenal this hey, year. Logan Bonner and company. Yeah, hey, Logan Bonner is not the Logan Bonner we <laughs> saw, you know, years ago, or at least what we saw from in 2021. Uh, it's concerning, and you give BYU a lot of credit. Kalani Sataki has this team rolling even after stumbling. So uh, I'm, I'm laying the 24 points here. Provo's a tough place to go play. I've experienced that firsthand. And I just think they're getting back the reinforce, reinforcements to try to make a run and see if they can't cause a little chaos here when it comes to the college football playoff. Maybe Kalani Sataki's a little distracted from some of the other coaching jobs that are available. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> That's what you're hoping. What you, yeah. That's what you're hoping. <laughs> Which no, one? Which I one? think he would be a great hire at Arizona State. And it's okay. been, I don't know, I'm, I'm totally joking about him being distracted from that one. You're trying to make rumors. a case. You're going to start rumors. I'm trying to make Danny. a case, but he would be an outstanding hire wherever he goes, and BYU would not want to lose him either. So you guys have had a ton of agreement. Uh, not so much between the back 12 and then looking at BYU here because Brady's going Oklahoma in the under. Danny likes TCU in the over. You both like the over in Texas Tech at Kansas State. Neither one of you feeling too great about that game there. Uh, Brady likes BYU in the over. Danny, Utah State and the under. Let's do some best bets. How about that for week five? Brady, we'll start with you. How about that? How about yeah. that? <laughs> How about me that? outside. Um, I'm going to say the under of Illinois at Wisconsin is mm. my best bet of the week. I know it's not one of the games we talked about, but 
look, Wisconsin's got to come back home. Camp Randall's a tough place to play. I think that defense is something to prove, and they're going to try to pitch a shutout versus Illinois. Now, look, Illinois can run the football, and they'll play some pretty stingy defense too. So I think it's a quick game. It's one of which I don't think you're going to see an offensive explosion. So for that reason, I love the under of 43.5 points. I like the way you're thinking there. I totally agree with you. I'm going to go to Clemson, NC State. You know, it's going to be a, a loud atmosphere. All year long, people have been talking about the demise of Clemson. They lost to NC State last year. NC State slayed that dragon for the whole conference in overtime last year. I think Clemson unloads on NC State. I thought that was a significant kind of career-shaping win for DJ DJ Uyunglele uh, at Wake Forest. I think he continues to piggyback off that. I think Clemson dominates this one, so I'll lay the 6.5 all day long. Get it now before it goes to 7. Sure. I think you'll be comfortable, but... Okay. You think it'll get sure. to seven? Probably. Okay. Yeah, I think some late money will come in. Lock in eighty picks. Nine. Wow. Nine well, today. Here's the reality: oh, is we've know. seen more football. Yes, so I get one hundred percent. I think get we have it. a better idea. Better what we're, here. Yeah, what we're getting these. Here are your lock right. unity picks. Okay, uh, Danny, I think you asked. We now have the record for your lock unity picks. Yeah. Want to know? Is it good? <laughs> Twelve, thirteen, and one. Oh no! <laughs> but. <laughs> But no. we haven't had very many. Yes, and I told you. early in the season yeah. where it's a crapshoot. Oh, no. Yeah, now exactly. we're getting more information. Um, I wish we could bring back that, that Brady Quinn video, but, you know, it's fine. <laughs> so enjoy week five. Amanda Garrett, Brady Quinn, Danny Cannell. We'll talk to you soon. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.